Well, I was once a horse asleep and I'm a sinning. I had no place to hide. Lord, and in that judging me no more, found myself standing outside of one day when the street rolled open, the heavens came up, and I had no place to hide. I'm singing the word. Oh, no. Don't get caught standing outside. Cosmopolitan Baptist Church. This morning I'll be reading from the Old Testament, the NIV version. It's Psalms 139, verses 1 through 6. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my throats from afar. You discern my going out and lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to obtain. The word of God for the people of God, and today is a good day to have a great day. Thank you very much. Good morning. Can we bow our heads in prayer as we have just have a little talk with Jesus for a moment. Lord, we come to you as humble as we know how, just to say thank you. Thank you for allowing us to wake up this morning to see a day that we have never seen before and a day that we will never see again. Lord, we ask you to just give us the understanding of what's going on in this world. If we would get out of the way and let you take full control, everything would be all right. Because we can do nothing except listen and depend on you. So we are like dirty rags. We need to depend on you for everything. We are nothing without you. Lord, we pray for the sick, the shut in. We pray, we pray even for the folks out in the street that doesn't even know where they're going to lay their head tonight. But Lord, most of all, we want to be able to show the love that you give us. Even when things are going bad, we want to be able to show the love. Even when there's rain, 
We want to be able to show the love. Even when there's disorder, we want to be able to show the love. Lord, we love you. We love everything you do. Because without you, we're nothing. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. And we step out of the way and give it all to you. We say this as humble as we know how. We praise you, we glorify you, and we honor you in your name. And we all say, Amen, Amen, and Amen. I will be referencing several scriptures throughout the message, but for our text today, listen to the words from the book of 1 John in the New Testament, chapter 3, verse 20. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. I want to speak to you today on the subject God knows everything. God knows everything. Have you ever tried to keep a secret from God? Have you ever done something that you know God would not be pleased with? And you hope that God wouldn't find out? Maybe you were like Adam and Eve in the account found in Genesis chapter 3. You remember God told them to tend the Garden of Eden, and he gave them the freedom to eat of any of the trees in the garden except one, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But they did what God told them not to do. They ate fruit from that one tree that God forbid them to eat of. And when they did, their sin caused them to fall from grace. They saw themselves differently. For the first time, they knew that they were naked and they were ashamed. They tried to cover up their nakedness with fig leaves and they hid from God in the garden. Maybe one of the most ironic statements in all of the scripture is found in Genesis 3 and 9. God called Adam and said to him, Where are you? Where are you? God asked not because he didn't see Adam, not because he couldn't locate Adam through the dense foliage of the trees in the garden. God asked Adam this question of his whereabouts and God already knew where he was. God didn't ask Adam where he was so that God could follow his voice to meet up with him. God asked because for the first time in his life, Adam was lost. Adam didn't know where he was. If you read that passage, you'll see that Adam never told God where he was. He told God that he was afraid, and he told God that he was naked, and he said to God, so I hid myself. In Adam's fall from grace, God always knew where Adam was and what he was doing. God knows all things. The Bible teaches from Genesis to Revelation that God is omniscient. He has perfect knowledge of all things. God does not have to learn anything, and he has not forgotten anything. He never discovers anything. God does not have to figure things out. He just knows everything. His knowledge is infinite. Simply put, God knows everything. While I can never tell you everything that God knows, I do think that there are a few things that if brought to your attention might benefit you about what God knows. And I'm glad to inform you or to remind you of a few but 
important things that God knows with the hope that it will encourage you. First, rest assured that God knows who you are. There's no worse feeling than to be in someone's presence and they not know who you are. It can cause feelings of unimportance or insignificance. God wants you to be assured that he knows who you are. In 2 Timothy 2 and 19, we're told that the Lord knows those who are his. In John 10 and 4, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep. What a blessing that God knows you. He knows those who believe and trust in him, those who are saved and have made Jesus the Lord of their lives. As a matter of fact, God knows everything about you. He said in Jeremiah 1 and 5, Behold, I formed thee in the belly. Before then, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. God knows everything about you, every detail. He knows what's on your mind. He knows what's on your heart. He knows your habits, <clears throat> both good and bad. God knows everything about you. He knows you so well that he knows you better than you know yourself. In Luke 12 and 5, the scripture lets you know that God knows the numbers of hairs on your head. Isn't it reassuring to know that God knows you? The best part is that the God who knows you claims you as his child. When you became saved, you became a child of God. Jesus said he knows those who are his. He doesn't just know about you, he knows you personally. He doesn't just recognize you, he knows you intimately. God knows you as a loving father knows his child. God knows what you like and don't like. He knows what makes you happy and what makes you hurt. He knows what's on your mind and in your heart. God knows you well. Here's the good news. It is that in spite of what God knows about you, he still loves you. I hear people say sometimes, God knows my heart. They say that to mean Though I did wrong, my heart is right and God knows my heart. Well, what's really in your heart? Do you have the heart to create peace or to cause problems? What's in your heart, being loving or having malice? What's really in your heart that you say God knows your heart? Is it wishing others well and hoping or hoping that something bad happens to them. The Bible says, whatsoever a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So what's on your heart? Whatever it is, God knows and he still loves you. Secondly, rest assured that God not only knows who you are, but he also knows what you do. That might make some people squirm. Like the person who does something that you wish God didn't know. <clears throat> but of course, he does know. Because he knows everything that you do. Listen to the psalmist David in Psalm 139. In the first four verses, he says, O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before word is on my tongue, behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. Listen to what Jesus said 
to the seven churches of Asia Minor in the second and third chapters of the book of Revelation as he spoke to the churches along with everything else that he said he told each individual church that he knew their works he said to the church of Ephesus the church of Smyrna the church of Pergamos the church of Thyatira the church of Sardis and Philadelphia and Laodicea I know your works I know your deeds I know that you persevered. I know what you did and didn't tolerate. Jesus said to them, I know your afflictions. I know your poverty. He knew whether they were faithful or denied the faith. Jesus knew of their love and of their service. He knew their reputations. He knew their strengths and their weaknesses. He knew all about them. He knew how they were honoring God, how they were ministering to others, how they stood on his word. He knew how they messed up and how some were hypocritical, how others spread the gospel. Jesus knew what each congregation had done and was doing. He knew the good, the bad, and the ugly. Not only did God know about those churches, he also knows everything about churches today. He knows about this church. He knows about other churches. He also knows about every person in the church. He knows everything about you and me. God knows our goings and our comings, our deeds and our words. He knows everything about everybody. In the text, John was pointing out a distinguishing difference between one who is saved and one who is not. He said in 1 John 3 and 14 that we know that we pass from death unto life, from having a worldly nature to having a godlike nature because we love the brethren. He says in verse 16, that Jesus loved us and he proved that when he laid down his life for us on the cross at Calvary. Since we are Christians, we are followers of Christ, we should love as Christ loved. We should love the brethren, John said. He expounds on his thought by saying that if a Christian sees a brother in need, and has no compassion for him, if he sees the brother or sister in need and does nothing to help them, then the love of God is just not in him. He commands us not to love in words only. Follow up loving words with loving actions, he says. He tells us to love in deed and in truth. Love in actions which stem from a heart which is sincere and honest. Love originates in the heart and is demonstrated in our actions. Then John says, if and when your heart condemns you, when your heart is not right, remember that God is greater than your heart. And remember that God knows everything, including what's on your heart. When your heart is right, but you fall away, God knows your heart. When you have good intentions, but you don't follow through, God knows your heart. When you mean well, but you don't perform well, God knows. Sometimes, we want to do right, but we don't. God knows your heart. Paul said, when I would do right, evil was all around me. God knows that. The good news then is that God knows your heart. He knows the difference in intentional wrong and mistakes. 
He knows whether you did what you did out of love or not. God knows what you do, what you think, what you feel, what your motives are. God knows everything. He knows if what you do good is genuine. God knows. John says if your heart condemns you, if you're honest and admit that you were wrong, if you say that you shouldn't have done what you did, you might condemn yourself, but God is just and willing to forgive you for your sins. For his knowledge of you is greater than your knowledge of yourself. Listen to what the Apostle Paul said in Romans 8 and 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Thirdly, sometimes what we're doing gets us in trouble. And sometimes we become targets of attack because we're Christians. Because of that, it is especially good for us to know that God knows not only who we are and what we're doing, but he also knows how to deliver us from troubles. God knows how to deliver you from your troubles. That's what the scripture says in 2 Peter 2 and 9. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations. Listen to 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. You do not have to yield to sin. God knows how to deliver you from it. He knows also how to deliver you from troubles. In Exodus 3 and 7, when God's people, the Israelites, were enslaved in Egypt, the Lord said, I have surely seen the afflictions of my people, my people who are in Egypt enslaved and have given heed to their cry because of their taskmasters, for I am aware of their sufferings. After God told Moses that, God did as only he could. He freed his people from Egypt. God knew what it would take, and he knew how it had to be done. The Israelites didn't know, or they would have escaped already. So God sent Moses to Pharaoh and told him to let his people go. Pharaoh refused, so God sent pestilence on Egypt. He sent plagues on the Egyptians. He sent death on the nation. And with that, Pharaoh released the Israelites and sent them to their freedom. God knows how to deliver his people. When they left Egypt, they had problems along the way. Pharaoh sent his soldiers to capture the Israelites and return them to Egypt. But God did as only God knew how to do. He opened the Red Sea and made a path for the Israelites to walk through, and then he closed the waters and drowned all of the enemy soldiers. God knows how to deliver his children. God knows how to deliver you. He knows how to deliver you from sickness, how to deliver you from troubles, how to deliver you from lack. God knows how to deliver you from your enemies, and he knows how and he'll take care of you. I close today by saying to you that I am glad that God knows 
how to deliver us from trouble. And I am also glad that I know why he will deliver us. It is because he has better plans for us. Listen to what God said in Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. God has plans for us. They are to prosper us, to protect us, to give us hope. God's plans are to give you a bright future. God knows what you need and his plans exceed your needs. God has made marvelous plans for us and he has orchestrated those plans to a T. Best of all, a long time ago, God planned for us to spend eternity with him. But sin was hindering us from obtaining what God had planned. So God planned a way for us to receive what he wanted us to have. He knew that it would take someone sinless to save us from our sins. He knew it would take more than a mere man to redeem us. He knew that only his son Jesus could do it. He knew that Jesus would give his life at Calvary to save us. And God knew that when Jesus died, they'd bury him in a borrowed tomb. God knew that on a Sunday morning, Jesus was rise victorious over death and the grave. I'm glad not only about what God knows, but I am also glad about what I know. I know that Jesus loves me. And I know because that the Bible tells me so. I know that I'm a child of God and I know that Jesus saved my soul. And I know that I was blind, but now I see. I know that everything will be all right. I know that in this world, I will have troubles but still I know that everything's going to be all right. I know that God will fix it, that God will take care of me. I know that heaven is my home. And I know that Jesus prepared a mansion for me and for you there. I know that my Redeemer liveth. I know that he lives. And because he lives, I live. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow and you can face tomorrow. And because he lives, all of our fear is gone. Because we know God holds the future. God holds tomorrow and every day. And we know that life is worth living just because he lives. Aren't you glad to know today? with as many questions as we have, with as many concerns as we have about the future, aren't we glad to know that God knows everything? Amen. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer. And we realize as we pray that we are not saying anything to you that you do not already know. But we also recognize that you love for your children to come before your throne of grace and to share our hearts and our concerns with you. We pray today to say thank you. We pray today to bless your name. We pray today because you are deserving of all glory. We pray today to thank you for your son, Jesus, who is our savior. We are grateful for his wonderful sacrifice and his blessed resurrection from the grave. Oh God, we bless your name because you and you only are worthy to be praised. We ask, Lord, that you will please 
Bless your children, especially those in need. Please bring healing to those who are sick, comfort to those who bereave. Give what those who are lacking need. Bless us spiritually and physically and materially. Bless us to enable us to do what you've called us to do in ministry, in serving in our homes and communities. Whatever your will is, let thy will be done. This is our prayer as we bless you and your son Jesus and we thank you for the Holy Spirit and we pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen.